Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit more about self-publishing. I've talked about my personal experience in the past, but today I thought I'd answer some questions from some of my friends or my fellas and just see what like, very specific things you'd like to know. So, let's begin. So the first question, I'll put all the questions up on the screen because this is quite a long one, so I'm going to like break it down into parts. The first thing we'd like to know is the advantages of self-publishing and why I chose that route rather than traditional publishing. So um, I think there's only one or like two advantages of self-publishing. First one is that like anyone can do it. So to get traditional publishing you have to get an agent who then goes on to the like publishing house and then it goes on from there. And then you lose a bit of like control over what happens to your work. So self-publishing, like you can do it yourself, you don't need an agent. Because the only kind of traditional publishing you can do without an agent is vanity publishing and I talked about that in a video called I Rejected a Publishing Contract, so if you want to know more about vanity publishing and why you should not do it, watch that video. But the other advantage with self-publishing is that you have full control over everything. So with traditional publishing you'd have someone who designs a cover for you and you don't usually get to choose the cover. You have people I understand that editors are very important for making the best book possible, but they may like change your story or get rid of bits you like or put in bits you don't. So the only real advantage of self-publishing is you can do it yourself and you get full control over everything. Someone's drilling. So like, this is a proof copy by the way, that's why it's got like an ugly spine. So like with this book, I could like choose the cover myself, I could choose everything that goes on it with myself, I could put like my book playlist in which may not have been able to go in if it was with a traditional publishing house. But other than that, there's um, basically no advantages to self-publishing. <laughs> also I self-published because I started writing this book when I was 13, I published it when I was 15. So at that time I definitely was not ready for a proper publishing contract. And... That's about it really. I don't think I'm ready for a contract basically. So are there any negatives about self-publishing going through a public then going through a publishing company? Self-publishing is very expensive, or it can be. I use a website called CreateSpace and that really showed me that the true costs that go into self-publishing, like you would have to you have to pay for the book covers yourself, unless you design it yourself, but then you have to like buy the images and own the rights to that and own the rights to the fonts and all things like that. If you want to, you'd have to pay for an editor, which can be hundreds and hundreds, maybe even like a thousand pounds or more. <coughs> and also you'd have to pay for marketing, which this is a thing I looked at more on Goodreads because they have an advertising program and that was I think it was something like £500 for very limited marketing. So yeah, marketing is hugely expensive and self-publishing has a lot of costs. Like, if you, I mean, if you want to go down self-publishing and have it be, like, put as much effort into it as possible to make it be as beneficial as possible, it could cost you like thousands of pounds. My book, because I didn't pay for, I didn't pay for an editor, I didn't have an editor. Um, I didn't pay for marketing because this is really a thing, I just wanted to have a book, I didn't really want it to be like a number one bestseller the first time, I just, I was 15 okay, I wanted to have a book. <laughs> and um, the cover didn't cost me £100, so I got this, it was a pre-made book cover, so it's not like someone designed it specifically for me, so it's a lot cheaper. Also if I'm not answering these questions very well, I'm going to try and write it into a blog post answering it so I can like word my thoughts and edit them properly and do a little more research. Also, if you still have any questions about what I'm saying, like drop a little comment in the below and I will try and explain myself properly. So yeah, the main benefits and negatives of self-publishing. And so self-publishing, you get full creative control, but it's very expensive. Traditional publishing, you have less creative control, but you don't have to pay for anything. Unless you do vanity publishing, which you should not do that because it costs thousands of pounds, basically. Oh yeah, one more question here. Did you edit it all yourself or did you pay for editors to take a look, ask family or friends to help? So I started off with editing it myself. I'm just going to get something real quick. So this folder here, it's this entire thing is my first book Beauty and the Breakdown printed all off because I've seen, you know, I thought that's what you were like, supposed to do with books because I've seen so many people that I follow on Instagram and they have like the thick manuscripts of their book and they have editing notes on every page. 
So like you can see, I like started off trying to like do notes properly. I'm sorry if that's sound if you can hear it. So I started trying to do notes properly, but there's... I maybe got about, you know, a few chapters in and I gave up that way because it wasn't working for me. Reading all the work again and doing it like line by line wasn't very beneficial for me. So what I did end up doing, because I started writing this book on the online community novellas, was that I asked people for feedback basically and they all left comments basically pointing out errors or grammar mistakes and plot errors and things that they want to happen, things they don't want to happen. And that was very beneficial for me because it was basically my target audience telling me what they want and what they like and what they don't like, which was, you know, very beneficial. But the way that I ended up finally editing this book is that I put my first draft document on one side of the screen and I had a blank one on the second side of the screen and I basically rewrote the entire book. Not like changing the entire thing or changing a lot of things, it was basically having, you know, the first edit on one side and then just starting afresh on the second. So I can, so it's just rewriting it rather than, you know, like line by line editing didn't work. People reviewing the book, they're like my beta better or beta readers. I think beta. So having other people read your work and review it for you is beneficial and the whole side by side thing works a lot. And that was how I edited this book. So the next question is someone would like to know a bit more about how to sort out the covers. I don't really know what sort out means, so I'm just going to say basically how I got this cover. And that's what the book's around for a bit. Because this one has a spine. So there are a couple of ways you can go, go about getting book covers. You can pay someone to design the entire thing for you, which can be hundreds of pounds. But another way I found is the pre-made book cover, which is people that design book covers. I'm going to put like a video here of how I got this book cover. But people design covers and then you just pay them, I think the, the average price I've seen for this is like 30 to 40 pounds, that they will put like your book title and your name on there instead. So it's not like a fully personalised cover, but it's very affordable in comparison to other things I've seen. And you know, it's still unique to you, because as soon as you buy that cover, no one else can use it. So if you've seen this video, this cover was originally called Summer in the Valley. So, you know, and I was scrolling through the cover website. So basically to find these websites, I basically went onto Google, I typed in pre-made book cover, and I went on every single website that came up to find like an average price of what I should be paying, and just to, you know, look around, because these covers can be very hit or miss. And I found this one. I was scrolling through, was it like a YA or romance? I might have been even like scrolling through the sales section of this website, and I saw a brunette boy and a blonde girl and I was like, oh my god, that's my Josh and Clara. And then this was my cover, basically. But then, because these covers are usually used for like ebooks, so you, I had to pay extra to get the spine in the back cover. Which was, I think that was something like $25. Because the cover was on sale as well, the entire thing maybe cost $40. So I'm between like $40 and $50. So that's how I got the cover for this book. Because I don't want to pay hundreds of pounds for a like personalised one. If I can find one that someone's already made that is basically what I would have wanted anyway. And the one for my new book, which will be coming out hopefully this year, called Paper Forest. So I went on to... I think I just typed in like, pre-made book covers again. And I found a link for Etsy come up. And I was like, you know, I use Etsy to buy jewellery. They're not going to have a good book cover. But I found a good book cover. Which again, I think costs somewhere between 30 and 40 pounds. I'll put like a screenshot of the website up here so you can see. But yeah, Etsy is a very good source book covers and just typing premium book covers. But I think I found Etsy more useful because on the individual website one, you got to scroll through sometimes literally thousands of covers to find a good one. Like for this one, there were, there were like maybe a hundred covers across the entire website and it was broken into categories. But some you have to scroll through thousands, and Etsy, I just typed in pre-made book cover, I scrolled, I found it, and it was like a love at first sight for a book cover. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so the next question is about marketing and the publishing system I used. So first off, I used CreateSpace, which is a company basically made by Amazon. And 
I think it's broken into like three companies. You have CreateSpace, which is a company you can use for making physical books. You have KDP, um, Kindle Direct Publishing, which is also part of this company, where you can get your ebooks. And there's one called ACX, where you can get your audiobooks done. So they're like three companies that are all owned by Amazon, and they're all basically the same thing. And that's the route I went down because I spent a lot of time Googling different self publishing companies. And this was, I think, the only one that did like all three options. Or was the only one that did like physical books and ebooks? I don't really remember. Because, but because it's owned by Amazon, it the books get directly put onto Amazon. And that's a good thing to know. And I don't really know much about other companies, but this one you could choose the price of the book. You could choose like what percent profit you get off ebooks. And oh yeah, you can choose you can like, you can make offers and deals for the book because you can change the price at any point and you can set like you can. I spent a lot of time doing like discounted ebooks and discounted books because you can just change that whenever you want. So you have control over like prices and like what kind of book you're putting out. Does that make sense? I chose CreateSpace as part of Amazon and it has lots of things that are good, basically. About marketing, at, when you finish like making a book there is a section at the end where you can like pay to get it marketed properly which costs hundreds of pounds so I did not do that. Also on Goodreads, Goodreads is a great website because as well as like finding books, there's a giveaway section where uh, I've won, where is it? there's a book down here, it's one I won from a Goodreads giveaway because thousands of people enter these and usually it's only like one copy getting given away but sometimes it's like authors giving away signed limited edition like hardcover books. So when this book first came out that's a lie. It was like months and months afterwards. But I did a giveaway for this. And like a thousand and something people entered it. And although only one person won, I think something like 400 people like added this book to one of their lists, which is a good way of like promoting marketing. Because even if this isn't making sense at all, how do I explain myself? Uh, when this giveaway ended, a couple hundred people had added it to this list and even though a couple hundred people hadn't bought it it's in like the TBR pile so they might buy it eventually they might get like a dodgy PDF copy of the ebook somewhere I don't know but it's a good way to get people to know about your book even if they're not actually reading it or buying it another thing I really want to try is there's a website called NetGalley where you can like request advanced read copies of books so you can read them before they come out and exchange for an honest review and that's something like I want to put my own books on there. <coughs> Sorry. Because I know like hundreds of people download these books and obviously you have to review them to get them. So that'd be a good way of going about getting book reviews. Apart from the only way to get your book on there is to pay hundreds of pounds because you've got to register as a publishing company. So until I have only a couple hundred quid lying around, I won't be doing that. That's something I'd really love to do, just because, again, even though it's not people like buying your book, it is people reading it and it's people reviewing it, which is arguably more important than getting some money. Because I make, I earn 15% of my book, basically, which isn't very much. So that was a little bit about the, like, how you can market your book, but there are all ways that you kind of have to pay for I guess like through Amazon you've got to pay for that marketing scheme Goodreads they do have an advertisers program which you've got to pay for but Goodreads has giveaways which is a good way to get people to know about your book but NetGalley is the best way to get reviews I think this is just based off my knowledge but it's not based on my experience so like don't trust everything I say so the only way I could actually publicize my book is that basically do it myself so, what did I do? I'm thinking, what did I do? Oh yeah, I have an Instagram account which is like the author account so I can like post things about my book and I ha I also do that on Twitter so social media is a good like the best way to publicise your book if you have no money like me. Then there's other things like I got put into our local newspaper because nothing interesting happened in our town so a kid writing a book was, you know, the most interesting thing that happened. And also I got put on like the front page of the school newsletter 
and I can confirm that no one bought the book because I can see I can see my sales. So I can see that no one bought the book since that article came out and I can see that no one bought it since the school newsletter came out but it's promotion. It's just basically letting people know that this thing exists. Also my school bought a copy of the book and put it in our library which is pretty cool and I really have to go back there and just find it so I can look at the stamps and see how many people have taken it out but I don't have the time. <laughs> so in summary, the marketing I've done myself is basically social media promotion which I can't really judge how successful it's been because I wasn't really aiming for much success with this book. I was basically aiming to have a copy to hold myself and bragging rights. But also, novellas, like you were one of the great ways of me actually selling my book because so many people like posted pictures with my book and it made me feel like all warm and fuzzy on the inside. And that was just like a surreal feeling that people that I'm kind of friends with across the globe have a copy of my book and that really like meant a lot to me and it still does because I made a little collage with like people holding my book up and I've gone soft. So the final point we're going to talk about today is how to tell a scam publisher from a legitimate one. I don't honestly I don't really know how you can get scammed self-publishing but I think the best way to do it is research. You have to look at all the companies you can find and basically read every review you can, like every experience you can about each thing. But I think that if you type in self-publishing, like the first couple of companies that come up are the biggest ones, so the best ones to go with. So that's like a good choice of how you won't get scammed. Honestly I'm very intrigued with how you got scammed <laughs> and like the details behind that. So you can't really get scammed with self-publishing if you like do your research, look around. Well you don't really have to look around. Because if you type in self-publishing, like yeah, the best ones will come up. You can't really get scammed with traditional publishing because you have an agent and you have contracts and if it's like, a big company you can't really get scammed. But the one way you do get scammed is vanity publishing, which I will put a link to that video in the description. I've lost my train of thought. So publishing can't get scammed if you go with a good company. Traditional publishing can't get scammed. Vanity publishing very much is a scam. And if you see a publishing house that accepts unsolicited manuscripts, basically turn in the opposite direction, or read every single review you can about it. Because then you might find out that basically everyone gets sent a contract, everyone gets asked for a lot of money, but I found out that pretty much no one had seen results. So that's that on that. <laughs> So I hope this video maybe kind of helped. I tried to answer some questions but I will write this in that blog post form so I can organise and edit my thoughts and make more sense. So yeah. I hope I answered your questions. If you have any further questions about things I've said in this video or any questions just about self-publishing in general, drop in the comments and I will try my best to leave you a articulate response. Maybe. But thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye!